How do we go ahead then and use more specific testing to diagnose uh, leptospire? Well, one of the uh, most common uh, types of testing would be microscopic agglutination testing or MAT testing. And this is the most common test used for the diagnosis of leptospirosis. This particular test uses dark field microscopy, as you see here, to identify the highest dilution of the patient's serum, which causes 50% of the leptospires for that serovar tested to agglutinate. When you look at the MAT test or use the MAT test, you can get false negative results if the infecting serovar has not been included in the group of serovars tested. So if you're sending out these microscopic agglutination titers, you'd like to send them to a lab that includes serovars that are common uh, to the area uh, that you're in or that the patient is in. It's difficult to establish a precise titer level that indicates definitive infection with a particular serovar, but in general, greater than or equal to 1 to 800 titers, highly suggestive infection with the, lep with the leptospire being tested. You have to remember that cross-reactivity can occur among serovars, so it's possible for you to go ahead and get uh, some higher titers of some non-infecting serovars that are cross-reacting uh, with the actual serovar that's causing a problem. And of course, you can also get some increases uh, in the titers for patients that have been um, vaccinated for leptospira as well. Now, in my experience, most of these are lower titers. You know, most of the ones I see are like 1 to 100, 1 to 200. Um, most experts will say that generally vaccination titers are less than 1 to 400, but occasionally you can get some really high ones, especially if it's within three months of when the dog has been vaccinated. That's one reason why it's important for you to know what the vaccination status is. The uh, microscopic agglutination test results can be negative in the acute phase of illness. That's usually approximately in that first week of clinical signs that the patient is showing. So that's one reason why convalescent titers are recommended two to four weeks after the initial titer. And basically what you're looking for in those convalescent titers is a fourfold either increase or decrease in titer, which is considered indicative of recent infection. The reason that you can sometimes get decreases in them uh, has to do not only when you're catching that patient in the course of disease, but also if they've been treated with antibiotics, those titers will uh, tend to start to go down.